Hello. Uh, our pur the purpose of this video is to add the capacity to create another screen um, and take that color that we created in the first screen using the sliders to the second one. Uh, before we get into creating this in Xcode, let's uh, think a little bit about what we is it that we're going to do um, and excuse my drawing here. You have that first screen or first view. Call it view number one. And what we want to do is we want to create view number two. So that will be view number two. These are two screens on your uh, device. And we want to let the user create a behavior on view number one. As a result of this behavior, view number two is displayed. What behavior? There are many different behaviors, like moving the slide, the behavior, and so on. But in, there, in our case, what we can do is to uh, maybe add a button here that let the user move from uh, this first screen to the second screen. In the first screen, the user constructs a color. So we have a color that we constructed here using the red, green, and blue values. That color we constructed in the first screen or first view, we want to carry this over to the second view. Now, every view owns its own data and thus if we want to take the data from here to the other one something need to be done before we talk about the data let's first talk about the navigation to get that color that button to move us to the second view uh, where we are basically uh, it enabling the user to navigate from one view to the other because when you go to the second view you would want to add something in here that will take you back so you have another button here that will take you back so you can do that manually and manage all of this manually or we can use some of the features of Xcode and use what we would call a navigation controller. The navigation controller is a logic layer, logic meaning that you don't see it, you're not gonna see another view called navigation controller, the same way you don't see the view controller. The navigation controller is set up before your first view, so when the screen starts when the app loads, it loads into the navigation controller, but you don't see anything because it's just a logical layer. But the navigation controller is an object that is provided for you, similar to the other library objects we have used before, in order to facilitate the management of multiple views. One of the things the navigation controller does for you, it adds the navigation bar and allow you to add buttons to navigate from one view to the other. And once you navigate from one view, it automatically adds a back button to return you to the first view. How does the second view know which view you uh, called it? The navigation controller manages all of this for you. The idea here is that imagine you are on a block, on a street, and you have an item, a couch in one house, and then there's a cow and there's another house. The second house doesn't know anything about the first house. The fact that there's a couch in the first house has nothing to do or does not mean anything to if a couch exists in the second house. If you want to move a couch from the first house to the second house, then you want to have like a truck or a load or a cart or two people to carry it. You need to move the couch to a central place first before you move it to the second. Also, if you want to go from one house to the other, for us, our brain knows where we are and where we're going. 
So our brain can tell us that we moved from house one to house two, and thus if we want to go back, we know that we came from house one, so we come back to house one. However, in the digital world, the processor and the memory, uh, they know only what you tell them. So you have to tell them where you come from, and you have to keep track of all your steps, which is uh, a lot of work. The navigation controller does all of this for you. So we want to connect, we will connect the navigation controller with our first view and then go from the first view, add what we will call a segue that will take us to the second view. And in order to take the data that we constructed in the first view and move that to the second view, in order for us to put an RGB here, we have to find a temporary location that both of them see where we put the RGB here. So the RGB will go from the first view to the temporary location, then the second view will grab it from that temporary location. And this temporary location, you can use anything, but there is one already provided to you by the operating system called the user defaults. This is basically an, a memory location that is available that you can retrieve from view number one, put the data you want in it, then you go to view number two, retrieve it, and get the data that you want from it. All right, so that's what we're going to do. So two steps we're gonna do so that you know. Step number one, we're going to manage the navigation And then step number two, I'm pressing a button without noticing, sorry. Step number two is to uh, manage the data from one view to the other. So let's see how we can do that. So switch to Xcode and um, and bring in our utility. I don't want my navigation for now. And look for the navigation controller. Here's the navigation controller view. And then let's minimize this a little bit to make some room in the uh, storyboard and bring my navigation controller. The navigation controller comes down already with uh, a view controller with it called the root view controller. I don't want that root view controller because we already have our own. So click in the storyboard to, to deselect the navigation controller, then select only the what is called table view controller dash root and hit the delete button to delete it. Now you have a navigation control. Let's move this here so we can have some nice organization. This arrow that is right before the view controller, this arrow indicates the first screen, the first view. Whatever this arrow pointing to becomes the very first screen that is being displayed. Now I want to move that arrow to the navigation controller, so this way the navigation controller is the very first view that is loaded. Now the navigation controller is not really a view, it is a controller. So you have to connect that navigation controller to something and which is that view controller. To do that, we press the control key, press the control key and drag from the navigation controller to the view controller. The same way we have been dragging before release, it gives you option, manual segue or relationship segue, root view controller meaning the very first view in the navigation controller and that's what we want. This means that this view will be the very first one. Notice once we did that, it pushed everything down a little bit and we added this uh, uh, menu bar that, uh, that has three areas, an area to the left for a button, area to the right, an area in the middle, and, um, and, and, and so on. Now I want to add another view controller 
So let's look for the view controller. Here is a view controller. And bring that view controller down. Here it is. And I want to go from the view con from the first view controller to the second, which I will call this my uh, painting view controller, or my second view controller. Call it whatever you want to call it. And uh, or color view controller maybe. Uh, let's expand a little bit. So I want an action on my first view controller to lead me to my second view controller. So I will bring that action by adding a button. So you can look uh, for uh, different buttons. There is a navigation item. There is bar button item. So we can take a bar button item and put it in here. This is a regular button. You can add an image for it. You can load an image and add it. And you can give it a name. This is a, a button. It has a style. And you can, uh, there are some uh, preset uh, values. Uh, I can, uh, you can choose any of those. What does the action look like? That's the action one. Uh, or you can, uh, I don't think in our case, any one of those will work for us. So I want to go back to the custom and then say uh, view. Was there a view? Nope. So a view would work. You can add an image for it if you want. You can give it a color if you want. And then from that button, use the control drag to say to basically say, I want the second view to be loaded when the user click that first view. There are options here. A push segue will display the second view in a push. A model segue will give you some options of what you want, uh, the way you want this second view to be uh, displayed. Let's select a model here and select that segue. And here it gives you an option for the transition. You can flip, you can dissolve. Uh, let's say flip. Do you want to animate it? Yes, I want to animate it. So let's uh, move, try that. See how it will look. Here you see the, f the first view coming up. Everything still works the same. You click view, it flips and take you to the second view. The model segue does not give you automatically uh, a back button so you would have to uh, construct that yourself or we can change that for model to push segue which adds the menu bar item when we'll have the uh, the back button so it has the back button that can take you back to the first view so if you don't want to manage going back um, then you can uh, use the, uh, the push segue. If you want to manage the, the, uh, the back and the navigation, you can use the model and allow that to, uh, to take itself. So this is the first step, which is managing the navigation. The second step is uh, managing the data. Now, I want the data that is constructed here, these four numbers, I want to display them in the second view. Now, it may seem easy for you. However, as we mentioned earlier, the first view and the second view are completely two separate entities. So whatever you build in the first view has the scope of the first view. It is not visible to the second view. The second view doesn't see it. The only way to move it is to transfer it, to bring like uh, going into the house carry the couch outside and then move it to the second house and take it inside and we do that by using this user defaults 
So if I bring my navigation menu, at this time I have one view controller that is connected to these two, uh, this class view controller. Where is the controller of my second view? My second view came without a controller. But if I want to do anything, I have to add a controller for it. To do that, I go to Xcode, or I can right click from here and say new file. And I want an Objective C class. You can go to Xcode, File, Open New, or you can right click on the uh, project and say, I want to add a new file. So I want an Objective C class. Next, what do you want this class? I want this class to be a view controller. So in the subclass, select UI view controller. It will give you this default name. I'm gonna call this the color view controller, meaning that this is the view controller, the second one that will have the color. The next, where do you wanna save it? I'll save it here, create. Now I have another set of files. So I have another set of files here, color view controller. On my view controller, if I bring in my utility area, move to my identity inspector, and select that view controller, you see it says under the class, it uses the library default class. If you click on the drop down, you see the class that we just added. So I want to connect the two together. What I did here, I said that the controller of this view exists in this class. You do this if you want to make your own control. And in this case, I want to make my own control because I want to display the colors in the second view control. All right. So now I connected these two together. Now I need to figure out a way. How am I going to display that color? I want to start by making the label. So I will make uh, those four labels here, but I want to make only one label on the top and I will display the color in that label. So I will just display them comma separated list, red, green, blue, and alpha in one line on the top. So same thing I did with the first view. Look for the label. Add a label to the second view here. Want to give it enough width. And in the attributes, I want to reduce the size and I don't want anything in it. So that's my label. What I will do is I will, uh, I need to uh, save those colors to the user default, save the colors from the first view to the user default, then grab them from the user default in the second view and construct that label from them. So in order to do this, I need to start from the first view implementation and save the, the numbers to the uh, label, the user default. So I'll come here in my user action and I'll add step number six save the, or I will call it retrieve the uh, user, the standard user default, or retrieve to be accurate, a reference to the standard user default. And to do this, I use the library ns user default star and then give it any name. So what I'm doing here is that I'm going to retrieve it, but I want to save it somewhere. So I'm going to give it a name, uh, my defaults. And then I will send the message to this NS user defaults. And then that message is called the standard user defaults. Here's the description. It says returns the shared defaults object. So this is shared and the sharing is managed by the operating system, so you don't have to worry about that. And then hit enter, and at the end, semicolon. So now I have a reference to that shared default. 
Then step number seven is save the, and now you need to decide what is it you want to save. Do you want to save the strings? Do you want to save the floats? Do you want to save the color? Whatever you want to save. Um, I am going to save the floats since this is the most primitive values. So save the, uh, the uh, color values to the default object. To do that, I will be sending messages to my default object. So here's my default object. And then anytime you want to change something or add something, you say you use the set. You see here there are several sets depending on the type you want to put in the default. This is similar to when you bring in, um, uh, if you want to send something user the post office and you are sending a package from your home to another person's home, what do you do? You put a label in that package, and then you call the postman and says, here is the label, here is the package, and here is the name of that package. So when the postman goes to the second home, they know that they need to deliver in the package with that name, so they retrieve the package from that name. Set float, which is the message name, receives a float, which is similar to this float, so this is my data, then four key, and then a string. So what is that? This is the name. This is the label or the name that you want to use to reference this particular number. So that when we go to the second view and we say to the default, give me a number, the default will say, which number? So I have to label each one of the numbers. I have to key each one of the numbers. So the key here is a string that I attach to each number that I save in the defaults. So when I go to the second view, as we will do in a minute, when you go to the second view and go to the defaults and say, give me the red number, now you named it red number. So it will look for the key that is called the red number and will give you back that red number. So let's do that. Set float red value for key. And then the key is a string. Every time you put a string, you start with an at double quotation and then you put whatever string you want I'm gonna call this red number then I will send a similar message to the my defaults for each one of the other numbers set float blue value and blue number then another message for the green set float green value and then green number and another one my defaults set float alpha value and then this is alpha number so what I did here I saved each one of those numbers to my float now I can go to the second view Attach that label as an outlet to the second view. So let me bring the assistant editor of the second view. And take that label and connect it as an outlet for the second view. So I will call this label color. And then switch to the implementation of the second view. As you can see, the second view doesn't have really anything going on at this time. So I will start by synthesizing the label color. The view did load is a method that is called automatically when this view is loaded. So I will do here my steps. Step number one, retrieve a reference to the shared default. So I will save it. I will need to save it. NS user default star and then give it a name. Last in the other view, I called it my default. You can call it anything here. Uh, I will use the same name defaults. I will call it defaults. And then you can use any name that is not keyword. A keyword will be colored differently. 
and then I need to retrieve it the same way I retrieve it the last time to the NS user default I send the message standard user default then step number two retrieve the four different numbers and save them in a memory location so those four numbers will be float numbers so I'm sending a message to the defaults and say give me the float for key so it will return a float see here it returns a float so float for key and you give it the key that we specified so if you want to get the red I say give me the float for the key that is keyed under red number and I want to save this into a value so I will call it red value then I will do the same thing for green value by sending a message to the false and say give me a float for key and that key is green number then the same thing for the blue value default float for key and then this is the blue number same thing for the alpha float for key and this is the alpha number so I got all four numbers then step number three is to construct a string from all four numbers and for my case here I just want to demonstrate to you that we successfully placed the numbers in a temporary location and successfully retrieved from that temporary location so I create a string we have constructed strings before so I will call here the uh, color values or color string and then I will send the message to the NS string and then I'll say give me a string with format and in my format I will call it red equal and then give me point two f and then a space blue equal and then give me point two f and then green equal percent and point two f then alpha equal and then percent point two f uh, the percent point two f says that we're displaying a decimal number that has two digital digits after the decimal points and then what is the first so as you can see here I said I'm going to use four floats in this string I'm constructing a string with this format the format is letters equal and then this says insert a number the percent say insert the value that comes after the comma so there are four values meaning that after the comma I need to enter four variables and in the order I want them displayed here so if I want the red next to the red I need to put the red value first if I want the blue next then I put the blue value the green next then I put the green value and the alpha next then I put the alpha value so this will construct a string looks like that I want to take that string and then uh, put the string in the label and I need and I synthesize the label already so step number five send the message to the label say to the label say set text to the color string so now hopefully if this works I will the app starts allowing me to construct a color so here is the color I constructed 0.25 red 1 alpha 0 0.71 0 0.75 click view it should display 0 0.25 0 0.75 0 0.71 and the alpha if you go back and change those colors and click view the color has changed if you go back and change the alpha the alpha has changed what this is saying is that the first view construct values and in the second view you're able to read that values and then you can use with it what you want you can use those four to construct a color and color the background or you can use it to construct a color and use it to paint on that 
uh, wide area and that's what we will do in the next video.